Hello everyone, and welcome to your channel, Celestial Symphony. With the new Oppenheimer movie out in theaters across the country, today's video is going to be on the topic of atomic bombs. Atomic bombs and nuclear bombs are very powerful weapons of mass destruction. The explosive energy source of these bombs is caused by nuclear reactions. Scientists developed nuclear weapons technology for the first time during World War II. However, its irreparable damages have not been compensated for years. In this video, we're going to check out the structure of an atom bomb and the process of making one in detail. What is the structure of an atom bomb. Normally two elements, uranium and plutonium, are used to make atomic bombs. The nuclear fission reaction is carried out in many isotopes of uranium, but this reaction is not easily done in uranium-235. It emits more neutrons in the process of each fission reaction than other isotopes of uranium. Plutonium-239 acts similarly to uranium-235. These fissile materials are the first materials used in atomic bombs. In general, nuclear bombs use the energy released during fission or fusion of nuclear particles. This is to suppress the forces that hold the nucleus of an atom together. Types of nuclear energy There are two ways to release nuclear energy from an atom. 1. Nuclear fission 2. Nuclear fusion in nuclear fission The nucleus of an atom is split into two smaller pieces by a neutron. This method usually includes uranium isotopes or plutonium. In the second method, which is nuclear fusion, two smaller atoms, usually hydrogen isotopes such as deuterium and tritium, fuse at the same time to form a larger atom such as a helium isotope. This method is exactly the method by which the sun produces its energy. It creates bigger elements from smaller elements. Now let's take a more precise look at the steps to make an atomic bomb. Isotope selection. As a first step, every nuclear power plant must hire experienced nuclear scientists, engineers, and technicians. The professional team knows the main point of making these bombs very well, which is, if the heavy atomic nucleus splits, it produces tons of energy from a small amount of mass. This this energy can be used to generate electricity or even treat cancer. Nuclear explosions occur as a result of uncontrolled chain reactions in a very large amount of matter. The most common isotopes are uranium-235 and plutonium-239. Big countries like Russia and America use plutonium-239, but we must know that this element does not exist in nature and it must be made inside a nuclear reactor. However, you can find uranium in nature, which is why most countries use it for their nuclear programs. Obtaining Uranium It can be said that there are eight stages in making an atomic bomb. The second second stage being the easiest in the process. Uranium is commercially mined all over the world and sold in a powder form known as yellow cake. In some countries, the extraction and preparation of uranium to reach yellow cake is done alone, and 0 to 100% of it is done in the country. But other countries refer to Kazakhstan, which is the largest supplier of this material. This country exported about 20,000 tons of uranium in 2011. Unfortunately, buying uranium in bulk has its drawbacks. Uranium exported from Kazakhstan is mostly 238 uranium. This naturally occurring isotope does not undergo any nuclear reaction. The simplest nuclear weapon requires about 50 kilograms of uranium 235 with 90% purity. When transporting uranium, it's necessary to be stored, meaning that the country in question should consider building a nuclear center. Processing. To obtain uranium-235, its isotopes must be separated first, and doing this is harder than it seems. Chemically, uranium-235 and 238 isotopes are identical. The only way to separate is to pay attention to the mass of these two isotopes. Uranium-238 has more neutrons and therefore is slightly heavier. One of the most effective techniques is spinning uranium inside a centrifuge, but if we use uranium powder for this, things will get messy. So the yellow cake is made into a gas. For this, the following steps are taken. First, to burn the impurities. Uranium is heated. Next, uranium is exposed to hydrogen fluoride, and the product uranium tetrafluoride is obtained. Then, uranium tetrafluoride is heated in a furnace filled with fluorine gas. In the end, uranium hexafluoride gas will be obtained. This product is highly corrosive, so working with it requires a lot of care. After doing the above steps, it's time to use the centrifuge. Using this device, uranium-235 is separated from uranium-238. To separate very small atomic masses, you need a centrifuge that rotates at tens of thousands of revolutions per minute. This technology is very complex and requires high knowledge. In the following, we'll explain a little about the functioning of a centrifuge so we can understand how the device works. What is a centrifuge and how does it work? A centrifuge is a device that works with an electric motor, and it separates different mixtures using centrifugal force. The desired mixture is placed in a special place inside the centrifuge, and after turning on the device, it rotates around a fixed axis. The basis of centrifuge work is based on sedimentation. To better understand this concept, here's an example. Suppose we put a bottle full of fresh orange juice 
juice on the table for a certain amount of time. If we take the bottle after a certain amount of time and look at it, we will see some settled material. The reason for this is that the sediments are denser than the orange juice. Here, the denser material has settled down due to the gravitational pull from Earth. But maybe we didn't have enough patience to put the bottle of orange juice on the table and wait for this to happen. So. Here, we can use a centrifuge. This device accelerates the sedimentation process by exerting a much greater force than gravity. According to the above example, we can scientifically say that the work of centrifuges is done by separating collides and mixtures whose constituents are known based on the density of their constituents. Normally, the gravitational force from Earth will also play an important role. Enrichment. Using a centrifuge is one of the integral parts to make an atomic bomb. Every country needs several thousand centrifuges for this. These centrifuges should be placed next to each other in a cascade manner. In this case, uranium hexafluoride gas enrichment is easier. By passing from one waterfall to another, this gas causes slow accumulation of uranium-235. This tedious process may take months and could be elongated due to broken devices. Design. The post-enrichment stage is the design for the bomb. First, it should be determined for what purpose this nuclear weapon will be used. According to its selected target, the type of atom bomb is determined. But a question arises, is designing a bomb a difficult task? Not necessarily. For design, you only need to know and understand physics. Construction. At this stage, uranium-235 isotopic enrichment and bomb design have been completed, but there's still a long process to finish the build. First, the team of nuclear scientists must convert uranium from a gas phase to metal. A simple way is to use water, hydrofluoric acid, and magnesium. When the desired metal is prepared, it should be shaped into the intended design using advanced turning machines. Expansion of transmission and delivery system. The manufactured nuclear weapon must be transferred in a way. Transmission routes may be long or short. In any case, the way of transfer should be such that the safety of the people is not endangered. Testing the bomb. Whether a nuclear weapon is simple or complex, its successful testing will be crucial. These days, nuclear weapons are being tested underground. The shape of the explosion will be different from the actual atomic bomb explosion. Here, only the result matters. How much you uranium does an atomic bomb need? It seems that about 20 kilograms of uranium enriched to 90% of uranium-235 is enough to make a nuclear weapon. After enrichment, uranium must be turned into a metal through a series of processes to make various parts of the bomb. After doing this, about 20% of the substance is lost. The effects of nuclear weapons will be catastrophic. In the last days of World War II, the United States would drop two atomic bombs, Little Boy and Fat Man on the cities of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan. Little Boy exploded with a force of roughly 15 kilotons. By applying this force, most of the buildings were destroyed up to a radius of 1.6 kilometers from the explosion site. The temperature of the explosion site rose to about 6,000 degrees Celsius, or 10,800 degrees Fahrenheit. As a result, everything in the vicinity of the explosion was ignited and destroyed. One of the most important points after the bomb explosion is the release of dangerous ionizing radiation in radioactive rays. These rays and radiation are extremely harmful to people and their effects may even remain for generations. According to the news published in that year, the number of dead in the bombing of Hiroshima was 66,000 and 39,000 in Nagasaki. A total of 210,000 people lost their lives just because of these two atomic bombs. Apart from making atomic bombs, nuclear energy can be used to sweeten seawater, produce various radiopharmaceuticals for treatment of certain diseases, laser physics, space exploration, and scientific research. These are only some of the applications of nuclear technology. And that's gonna bring us to the end of the video. And make sure to tell us in the comments, do you think it's right for humans to be making such dangerous weapons? If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting the subscribe button and hit the bell so you never miss an upload. We wanna thank you again so much for watching. This has been Celestial Symphony. We'll see you in the next video.